Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. It's been a little while. I took a little break because something happened to me. That's right, a deer ran out in front of my car and it's totaled. And so I've been trying to deal with that and it's been a little stressful so I had to kind of put The Average EV to the side for a little bit to, to deal with my life, get myself back in a car. And uh, that's what this episode is gonna be about. So I'm gonna explain what happened, a little bit of the process of what I'm going through, I'm still going through. And then, yeah, what car did I get to replace the Kona? Let's get into it. All right, everybody. So this is what happened. I, um, I go to the gym every morning. So I went to the gym and then after gym, I'm driving to work. I'm driving to work and um, like a car comes by in the other lane and then a deer runs right behind it. I had no time to react, ran in front of the Kona, um, fortunately, I was going the speed limit. However, it since I was going the speed limit, it was 50 miles uh, in that area. It totaled my car, uh, which is really sad. Um, the airbag deployed my car, uh, disabled itself, which is great. Um, it came to a stop. Um, I have Blue Link, I think is what the Hyundai version's called. It called them immediately. They called me. Um, I was able to get out, check the damage, the 12 volt battery was actually destroyed. <laughs> so all the electronics inside were uh, not on. So I couldn't really do anything with the car. Um, I then called the police cause I wasn't able to move the car. They came, uh, I actually knew who it was. I've gone to school with him my whole life. So that was great to have someone kind of know. Uh, and then we dealt with it. Eventually the tow truck came and I actually went to work that day cause I just wasn't, I didn't want to sit at home all day thinking about that. So I went to work and then uh, dealt with it. Sorry, I happen to live over an air uh, live under an airspace, so that plane was going by. There's another one coming, so if you hear it, I'm sorry. But anyways, um, I have State Farm. They've been actually great throughout the whole process, uh, and I'm kind of dealing with something. So they eventually got me into rental. I hated being in the rental because I just don't like being in a car that's not mine or I have no um, relation to. So I ended up borrowing my in-law's car, which is a, a Toyota Rav4. So. Uh, that was interesting. Um, I definitely did not like being uh, back in a, a gas car. It just wasn't great. It wasn't a great experience, but I had to do it. Really didn't have much of a choice. Uh, so anyways, a lot of you don't know this, but my Kona was actually a lease. Um, I leased it because I wanted to try it out. And then I really ended up liking electric cars. And that's why we eventually bought the uh, Volkswagen ID4. So anyways, I've never totaled a lease before and maybe you haven't totaled a lease either. So uh, this is what happened. So basically, um, well, fortunately with the lease, there is a gap coverage built in. If you don't, don't know what gap is, it basically say um, what the insurance company would give me less than what's remainder of my lease, then um, the gap coverage would you know, pay that difference. So fortunately, I actually, um, the value was higher than what I owed on lease, so it wasn't gonna matter anyways, but it's still nice to have that. Uh, then essentially what happens is whatever money like someone would get normally in this scenario goes to the leasing company. Uh, and uh, I've heard different stories where maybe they'll give you something, maybe they won't. I don't really care, it was a clean wash, so um, it, it kind of, it, it was fine. Like it was whatever, it wasn't the end of the world. But then that left me without a car. So I had to go car hunting and I wasn't planning on it because as most of you know, I have a reservation in for a Volvo EX30 and that was gonna be my next car uh, somewhere around this summer once my lease was up and that car came out. Well, plans have changed. So I had to find a car. I still wanna do the EX30. So I wanted to find a car that I'm not gonna lose that much money on between now and when the Volvo EX30 uh, comes out. And I was actually having a lot of trouble finding a no accident, clean title, um, used EV that kind of fell within my price range and the um, trade-in value was going to basically be worth it for me where I wasn't gonna lose a ton of money. Um, and I, I looked at bolts because obviously bolts are a great option. They don't have adaptive cruise control, but you know, I was going to live. And unfortunately, um, uh, I couldn't find any bolts where I could buy it and I would actually come out, you know, in the black. <laughs> Every, everything had me basically losing money if I bought a bolt and then traded it in in eight months, which was unfortunate. Um, 
So then I was looking at Nissan Leafs and like, I am planning on doing like maybe like one road trip video just with a used car to kind of give the experience of uh, what it's like to road trip an older um, EV. And I just, I wasn't loving the Leaf. The, the smaller battery pick would have been, battery pack would have been a little bit better price wise. And then the bigger battery pack, I'm like, well, I'm paying a lot for a car that still only has X miles and doesn't have a good thermal management system. So then I kind of went on from the Leaf and then I was like, well, maybe I could get a Model 3, um, a used Model 3. There are some under $25,000 because I wanted to do the used EV tax credit, obviously to tell you all about that. And I was looking and looking and I was finding them. So then I would call up uh, the dealer should be, hey, I'm looking at this car. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then be like, yeah, and we have like two to three thousand dollars in dealer fees. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and like, you know, whatever dealer fees, whatever, whatever reason they have to have them. But I wasn't going to pay that much. Or one was like, you have, we have to install LoJack for eighteen hundred dollars. I'm like, that's a hard pass. So I, that just kept coming up with every single place that I called about a, um, a Model Three. So I was kind of defeated, and I kind of kept going in this loop of. Bolt, Leaf, Model 3, Bolt, Leaf, Model 3, Bolt, Leaf, Model 3. Um, there was a point where I was even looking at some i3s and uh, 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 Volkswagen e-golf, but then I was a little bit worried about the range with the weather. You know, we don't get a ton of weather, but it's cold enough where it'd be close um, in the winter time. <sighs> so then I was just like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, and then I did eventually decide on uh, a car. I, I found it, I did the, uh, I looked up what the trade-in would be, and basically I'll come out with the, the tax credit with maybe like one or two grand, hopefully, um, to put down on the new car, which would be awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I had no plans of getting this car. It's a little wild that this is the car I got, but I guess, I guess y'all want me to show it to you, right? Should I show it? Should I? All right, maybe I'll show it to you. All right, so this is my new car. Are you ready? Here we go. There it is. That's right, a Tesla Model S 2015. It's just the 70 kilowatt hour battery, uh, not the dual motor, but it was just an absolute deal. 20 grand, gonna get the tax credit, so that would be $1,600. And it was just, it was a, it was a steal. Uh, couldn't help but get it. It had 88,310 miles when we signed the paper. I'm just gonna keep this for about seven to eight months or uh, until the Volvo EX30 comes out, but it's just a really nice, comfortable ride. It was like a crazy deal for the money. And um, once I trade it in, I'm either hopefully will lose no or just a very little bit of money um, as far as having something to get me to and from work until uh, I get the Volvo EX30, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, everybody, that's it. Tesla Model S 2015. And um, that's what I'm gonna be riding around in. It's really nice, really comfortable. Love the winter package so far. I'm gonna do a whole nother video where I kind of go into it. Uh, maybe a little bit more of my rationale, how the car is doing right now. And then I'm gonna do some charging tests, just see like how does an old EV, especially an old Tesla, it's eight years old, charge. I'm gonna do a range test, how much range test, how much range do you actually get when you buy a used vehicle. And then I'm gonna cover the used EV tax credit and all that stuff. So it'll be a fun little car to have for a little bit bring you all some interesting content and also give me a little time in a Tesla. Um, I, I'm, you all know I'm not a big fan of Tesla. I'm really, it's really Elon Musk I'm not a big fan of. Um, but you know, if I'm gonna give you all well-informed opinions, I should probably get myself in a Tesla and this would be a, a good opportunity to do that. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I'm just glad that I came unscathed, came away unscathed from the, uh, the accident. Um, obviously, I, I wish that that hadn't happened to the deer, but this is kind of the, the reality of being a human, driving cars on roads with deer and nature, and it happens, and fortunately, I'm safe. Cars are replaceable, uh, and I'm, I'm in a car right now, so that's, that's awesome. So that's all I really have uh, for this little episode. Hopefully, you can check out some future content about the 2015 uh, Tesla Model S 70 uh, rear-wheel drive, and that's it. So. Again, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you all next time.